and welcome to this edition of Around the Town. I'm Marisa Hun. Today we look at an up and coming business, but first PSU student base group prepares to open a new store with an innovative style in downtown Pittsburgh area. Maggie Votes has more. Downtown Pittsburgh offers an array of storefronts and specialty shops to city residents. However, PSU's Enactus student group is currently preparing to introduce a new type of store to the Pittsburgh shopper. The upcoming store, called Crimson Culture, will display unique and handcrafted items from both local and international artists. Um, Crimson Culture will be, we're going to partner with 10,000 Villages, which is an organization, it's a non-profit private organization that um, works with uh, particularly women in third world countries and they bring their products that they make and they bring it to America. Also be trying to showcase some items from local artists as well. Um, I've been talking with the art department and we're hoping to be able to partner with some of the students so that they can have an opportunity to try selling some of their artwork as well. With help from group members and local volunteers, Enactus is currently readying the rented shop building located at 111 West 4th Street for its test opening. Right now it's like a festival sale, so it'll be open for about a three month period. And then we are going to look at what sells well, what didn't, and that is how we are gauging of what we need to eventually order so that we know what sells around here because some things might sell well here and not somewhere else. So this is kind of our test run. The group does hold hopes for the store's long-term future as a cultural center. Eventually, we'd like the store to be kind of more of a hangout, but that's more of a, in the future plans, we'd like it to be like a cultural place where you can go and look at the artists and also buy stuff while also it's kind of um, being a hangout a bit as well. But that's kind of our future plans. But for now, we also would like it to be for the international students too. That was Maggie Votes reporting for Around the Town. It is great to see students working together for a cause. Residents of Southeast Kansas are always looking for the newest place to chow down. Kayla Justice checks out a local meal on wheels. The beginning of all great businesses start with an idea. For new local business owner Sonia Watson, that idea began with a passion for cooking. We caught up with Sonia as she set up a trial run of her hot dog cart named Trixie's. Trixie's actually got its name from my grandmother who did auctions and concession stands back when I was a child and we took her dog Trixie everywhere we went. Although Trixie's has just begun, running a business does have its difficulties. The hardest part I think is believing in yourself that you can actually do what you plan to do and, and succeed at what you set out to succeed at. And believe she does, Sonia has had this dream for longer than most. I wanted to start this career because cooking's my passion and then I just, at my age and the place in life I am, I can finally take that, you know, on and um, become the entrepreneur that I want to be. While she's happy to serve Southeast Kansas customers, Sonia has bigger plans in mind. I hope Trixie's will become a, a food truck and I'd like to relocate and go down to the beach and serve food right off the beach. Trixie's plans to open in May, serving a variety of foods including hot dogs, pulled pork sandwiches, and tacos. That was Kayla Justice reporting for Around the Town. Local flea market at Paradise Mall is where you can find all sorts of knickknacks and household items that fit your needs. I went in search of Paradise and this is what I found. Paradise Mall has it all, from rings to fancy things, hats, clothes, and antiques, candles for your mantelpiece. Deals, 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 leave you thinking, what a still. Mona Swartz says Paradise Mall is much more than just antiques. You can pay your bills here, we're an online travel agency, we have payday loans, and we hand cut keys. The selection at Paradise Mall is always changing. We get merchandise every day. If you don't see what you're looking for today, come back tomorrow. It may be here then. We are open seven days a week, and that's a good thing because it's going to take you so long to get through the store and see what all we have that uh, you'll need all that time. Stay tuned 
for more flea market finds as we scour the local areas for more antiques and collectibles. Coming up next, we take a look at a hot barbecue place in Pittsburgh. Plus, we show you where you can get some spooky costumes. Hello there. Every American knows that U.S. pilots have the strongest passwords. But what makes them that way? American ingenuity, that's what. Here's the trick to it. Take a book, take a phrase from it, replace the spaces with numbers and symbols. That makes a password that's hard to crack and hard to forget. But the real security, that lies in changing your password regularly. I know. Tired of sitting around and watching the same old reality TV shows? I'm from the shore, bro. <laughs> I lift weights, I go to bed, and I party. Bored with the daily drama on Facebook? Hey, I wonder if I like this picture, if this is actually gonna save that baby's life, you know? That doctor's like, oh, okay, I can do it now. Try something new and exciting. Join VWARP and step into the world of gaming where you are only limited by your imagination. Explore your creative side with VWARP. Welcome back. If you're craving good barbecue, we have just the place. Ty Grocious takes a bite out of this slow-cooked goodness. Here in Pittsburgh, you can find the best swine on 69. Look for the tiny red hut on West 4th Street, where big things come in small packages. Smoky Racks is just a family-oriented, own business. We take pride in what we do, and we enjoy what we do. I mean, a lot of people out here can't say that. Smoky Rex offers a wide variety of smoked meat, but is famous for their delectable ribs and their loaded spud. The best menu item we have, I have to go with our ribs. You know, real fall off the bone, nice juicy. They also support Pitt State students by coming out to tailgate at every home football game and offering student specials. It's going to be called Tease Tuesday, which is going to be Fat Tuesday for any PSU employee or student. You get $2 off any spud from open to close, which is 11 to 8. So next time you take a trip down 69, follow your nose and try the best barbecue in town. The proof is in the pudding. I mean, we do a good job. I mean, we really cook out here and we have a good time doing it. And that was Ty Grocious. Halloween is upon us, and everyone wants that special or scary look. Jessica Ruiz has found just the place. As we count down the nights until ghosts and goblins will be roaming the streets of Pittsburgh, one local store is busier than any other time of year. Broadway Productions, Pittsburgh's fun store, has been offering area residents a broad array of Halloween costumes and accessories for the past 27 years. While they offer novelty items year-round, the month of October is their busiest. Uh, we, we see a lot more people since uh, October month has started. Whether shoppers are planning a costume party or to go trick-or-treating, Broadway Productions is Pittsburgh's one-stop shop. Well, I did go to Walmart, but they didn't have anything good. From costumes and makeup to fun accessories and decorations, area residents can invest in a look that will set them apart during the Halloween season for years to come. Unlike large local retailers, they even offer a special accommodation for those on a budget. Rental costumes are a popular choice. Children and adults alike are captivated by the variety of options available. This is so cool. They have so many costumes. Broadway Productions offers nearly everything local residents need to accessorize the upcoming holiday, but the new owners hope to offer a unique service in the seasons to come. It is their plan to incorporate face paintings by an experienced makeup artist to make future Halloweens ones that will give Pittsburgh a truly frightening aura. It isn't hard to understand why Broadway Productions is Pittsburgh's Halloween headquarters. Many retailers have limited supplies, but here, it's easy to find anything that you might need. PSU student Stephanie Powers will be attending a costume contest, and she has high hopes of winning by pairing up with her boyfriend, who will be competing as the Mad Hatter. Popular local retailers, however, could not provide her with the costume she needed. Sometimes it's hard to find costumes that are big enough, like tall enough for me, because I'm tall for an average girl. <laughs> In the market for an Alice in Wonderland costume, she quickly found just what she needed when she turned to Broadway Productions. They have a lot of better costumes here. As Halloween nears, now is the time to take advantage of the many items that Broadway Productions has to offer. 
They have extended their store hours until the holiday is over and are working hard to help Pittsburgh create a uniquely spooky environment. Jessica Ruiz reporting. Since Halloween is around the corner, I thought I'd share my favorite Halloween poem by Nicholas Gordon. Halloween wraps fear and innocence as though it were a slightly sour sweet. Let terror then be turned to treat. In other news, for nearly 100 years, downtown Pittsburgh has ha housed one of the area's most notable features, the Colonial Fox Theater. Our own Maggie Votes dives into this history. There's always a story. Behind every structure, every artifact, there's a tale. The story of the Colonial Fox Theater, located in Pittsburgh, Kansas, begins in 1920. Um, so the Colonial Fox Theater originally was called the Colonial, and it was built in 1920 um, by Alexander Best, who was a local entrepreneur, um, immigrated here from France when he was a young man, and um, built built up in the community kind of a reputation and and found his fortune and decided to invest in this theater. And back then, um, the theater was um, originally a vaudeville and silent film movie house. Through the years, the theater has played a large role in the community, serving as a hot spot for both teen and family outings. For some community residents, going to the Colonial Fox was life-changing. This theater holds a lot of memories for for the community um, for several different reasons. This is this is where you know kids had their music recitals. This is where they had their band concerts as kids. The theater is also where a lot of people met their future spouses. I mean, this is when you think of a theater experience. Most people remember who they're with more than they remember what they saw, and so this theater for a lot of people is where they made those connections. Though the theater met both financial and social success through much of the 20th century, cultural shifts would come to negatively impact the theater's well-being. The, the large and vast majority of people were moving to the edge of town, um, not just in Pittsburgh, but all over the country. It was called, you know, urban flight was really the movement really in the 60s, 70s, and 80s. And as a result, these little theaters that were always here in the heart of the town, in the downtown area, suffered a lot. And as a result, um, the Colonial Fox Theater closed down. The Colonial Fox stood vacant from the mid-1980s until 2007, when members of the community decided to take action toward its preservation. A small group of people um, decided to come together and form a nonprofit called the Colonial Fox Theater Foundation, and um, and we raised the money uh, to purchase the building when um, really otherwise it would have been demolished. Since taking possession in 2007, the foundation has worked to repair and further preserve the theater for future generations. Thanks, Maggie. That's it for this edition of Around the Town. See you next week as we keep exploring the town of Pittsburgh, Kansas. I rose to glory as the twenties roared. I wept with you through dust and want. Gave courage through dark years of war. And then came peace, and we laughed wholeheartedly once again. Sunday night, April 1st. In case you missed the showdown, GTV's Taylor Dawson gives us the details. Hmm, that's really interesting. <laughs> Oh. Whoa. Oh my goodness. And he's looking, Castaneda is looking to throw and has John Brown wide open. Castaneda threw for a touchdown. Gut busting laughs, guerrilla football, and campus news all semester long. You're watching Caps 13.